This is a highly controversial issue in the gardening space, and that is whether or not your ants are harmful or beneficial to your garden. The answer to that is kind of shocking. Hi, hello. If you do not know who I am, my name is Ashley. We garden with science. The gate crew is the people that comment down below. They're awesome, more knowledgeable by it than I am. They can probably actually speak as well. Okay, so what do you ants actually do in your garden? So they're actually responsible for about four or five things depending on what kind of ants you have and what garden you're in. So what I'm talking about is not in the world of like carpenter ants or anything. It's just your regular old garden ants. If you have like fire ants or carpenter ants or anything, they're harmful, just get rid of them. Do everything you can to get rid of them, in my opinion. Someone else might hold a different opinion but if it's destroying property or hurting children or animals, goodbye. So number one is that ants actually use decaying material to build their nests, meaning they clear out the plumbing, if you will, of your soil, which can allow for more air, more water infiltration and oxygen. If you watch this video is an actual fertilizer, if you will. So that clearly is beneficial to both soil microbiology as well as to the plants themselves. The other benefit to the removal of dead material is it can also include the removal of spaces where disease such as fungus, bacteria, and or just pests can overwinter or hang out in. So the clearing out of dead plant debris actually can mitigate the potential for an infection or a disease or a problem later on down the road. Now, because they are moving debris out and because they are chewing and breaking down and increasing the surface area on the plant debris, we also have another scenario that's beneficial to our plants and that is the increase of nutrient or, or mineralization of our our nutrients that is otherwise inside of that decaying plant material. Now, if it's being relocated and the plant is growing somewhere near the actual nest, obviously, they're gonna have a higher load of this. However, the microbes that are much smaller than ants benefit from the breaking down or the ripping or tearing that these macro insects, if you will, do. And it just increases surface area, which ultimately combined with the oxygen infiltration and potential increase in water infiltration, it results in more nutrient mineralization, which is exactly what plants need. Now, tunnels obviously are pretty obvious, so I'm not gonna go over that too much, but it falls into the same category as moving around dead plant material. I know you guys are smart, so there's no point to really draw on that anymore. I don't speak down to you. Okay, so the next one is, yes, they can help with pollination. Now. Here's the key. If you watch my video on self-pollination and whether or not you should help with self-pollination or hand pollinate, you remember I discussed in there the size of the pollinator will indicate how much pollination is taking place. So yes, ants move pollen around. However, when we look at the exoskeleton of a plant or a ant, if we look at a physical ant, we soon realize it can't carry around much pollen. Now it can carry around smaller pollen obviously on its back legs wherever it ends up larger size pollen bits will not attach to an ant at all unless they're physically removing it and transporting it somewhere else so obviously in this case it helps with pollination but again only with very specific plants and not all plants despite popular belief so the next one that people think is usually beneficial but it's not is aphids so when it comes to ants we commonly see them carrying around aphids. We particularly see a trail of them usually going up and down the side of a plant that is infested with aphids. Yes, ants eat aphids, but they also relocate aphids to help them get new plants to suck on so that they can multiply more, so their food source can multiply more. It's, it's the ant version of a gulag, but for aphids. Poor guys, we need to start protesting for them. But anyways, the Uyghur aphids of the ant world, they are relocated by the ants. So yes, they consume some. Yes, some of those make it back to their little nest. However, some also make it onto other plants. Now, there's people who think they do this on purpose. There's people who think that it just happens naturally because they just drop it in there, a lazy worker ant. Who knows what the reason is, but we know that they do spread aphids around the garden, despite the fact that they look like they're helping. That one kind of sucks because that one I was convinced is why ants were beneficial for years and why I put up with them so much. Okay, the last benefit to them that is 
true, but not, is the fact that they eat leaves. So some ants can go in and tear up your leaves. It's pretty obvious when this happens, you, you'll know if you have an ant ripping up your leaves. Obviously anything that defoliates a plant can harm the levels of photosynthesis that plant can do. The harm of photosynthesis reduces the carbohydrates, the hormones, the everything of the plant, which ultimately can reduce your yield. Where this could be beneficial is if you have disease or you naturally don't thin. If you're operating something like a wild cropping situation, like a, a wildflower bed or a lawn that's, you know, wild as well. An ant population in that space would make sense, uh, but obviously for something that you are already defoliating and pruning, maybe not so much. So, are ants beneficial? I think we can say that ants are beneficial if they are in control, meaning they aren't showing signs of damage to your garden. However, if they start taking over, like any overpopulation situation, it's not a good thing. So you need to make your own ant gulag and get rid of them. So let's talk about actual effective ways to get rid of these buggers. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys to figure out whether or not your ant population needs to be dealt with. The problems that you're having should be very obvious. Defoliating, increase in aphids, plants where the roots look like they've been chewed to bits, spaces where they're obviously doing damage to infrastructure such as cement. For whatever reason, they can chew through cement. It shocks me. They've eaten a hole in cement in my front yard. Those are scenarios that you obviously need to take care of them um, for your own personal sanity and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so we're gonna start from not the least effective, but the most maintenance heavy to the least maintenance heavy version of control. So probably the most maintenance heavy is diatomaceous earth. So DE is a clay, it's actual mineral soil that is very, very sharp. And the sharpness cuts into the exoskeleton, which dehydrates the ant and ultimately kills it. So sprinkling, it, the, sprinkling this outside of their little ant hole will eventually take out or help to slow down the growth or just population control, what is there. I've never seen it eliminate an anthill by any stretch of the imagination, but I have seen it decrease the intensity of an anthill. The reason why I say that this is more labor intensive is because it needs to be a powder. Once the rain hits it, once the wind blows it away and it's no longer a powder, which is the purpose and that's what causes the cuts. Once it becomes like a matted down gel or is gone, obviously it doesn't work anymore. So after a fresh rainfall, after even morning dew, yeah, even something like that, you will need to go in and reapply, which in my opinion is just too much work. But definitely an option. Okay, so the next one is actually cotton balls dipped in borax. Borax, as you know, is a powder. You could liquefy the borax and then let the cotton ball soak it up and then put that outside the nest. Or you can just like literally take the cotton ball and like put it in a bag with borax, shake it up. Um, like the little girl from Nemo with the fish. <laughs> Fishy! Anyways, shake it up and then put it out um, near the anthill. This can get wet and they can continue to chew on it. Obviously, if it's a heavy rain or you've heavily watered the space or a heavy amount of sprinklers, it's going to dilute the amount of borax in your cotton ball. So you'd need to reapply then. However, for the most part, it's going to stick around. The other one that I actually found worked really well for me was sugar and borax mixed together. You can also do like, I think baking soda people have done. I did borax and sugar. You literally shake it up in a bag, sprinkle it kind of all over. They can't tell the difference, I guess, and they chew it, ate it. And I did notice an actual decrease, particularly in the one that I wanted to deal with where they were eating the cement. So that is another option for borax and for whatever reason they eat it. Before we get to the ones that are the simplest, are ones that I personally find completely useless. Uh, so this is completely up to you whether or not you want to do it. What I will say is that if you try it, it's no skin off your back. So experiment, be your own garden scientist geek crew and Try these out, see if they work, if they do, wonderful. If they don't, it's kind of what I thought would happen. So number one is actually sprinkling coffee grounds on the ground. 
like around the space that they are. Apparently they don't like coffee. I don't know what living being on this planet doesn't enjoy coffee, except for people who put coffee grounds in their plants without decomposing at first. I mean, that situation is a living thing that doesn't appreciate it. Number two is vinegar. Now this obviously is going to work if you put enough vinegar down an ant hole. However, you're also gonna harm your plants. So if this is a situation where it's in your garden or on your lawn, I would not use vinegar because the amount you would have to use to kill your ant situation is going to be enough to also kill your plants. So if this is on your cement, or in your rocks or somewhere where you don't care if the plants around it die, then sure, go ahead, use vinegar. It's probably gonna do the trick for you. You're gonna need a lot of it, but it's gonna do the trick. In a garden space, please do not do that. That one's going to end horrifically. Okay, so this one, hands down, is probably the least amount of work, and that is nematodes. You cannot see them. They are completely in uh, invisible, non-existent. And all you do is simply apply them to the soil where the ant issue is. They hatch because they're a little alien egg and they go in and they actually eat the eggs. So the baby ants is what they take care of. So it is a population control method. I've never seen them like wipe out a colony. I have seen them control them before and I do use nematodes anywhere where there's not cement where there's cement and I can't actually get the nematodes to work, um, I obviously use the borax trick, but in the garden is when I do use the nematode trick. The other version that is pretty darn nifty and isn't nematodes, but works just as well, is actually Bacillus thuringiensis. So mosquito dunks, I have some. All I do is I pop that into like a watering can and I let it dissolve and then you can just water your plants with it uh, in the area that is infected. You don't actually have to do this like every single day. You could just do it like once a week, regular like a fertilizer, if you will. And in my opinion, it works pretty darn good, totally natural and over time will build up and ultimately is obviously a natural long-term solution that doesn't require too much attention if you keep up with it like right from the get-go. Now, if you wanna learn more on some really crazy garden hacks that actually do work based on science, if you wanna check out this video here, I actually talk about powdery mildew control using milk. Pretty neat, I know. And that video down there is what Google said you should watch. So you should go watch it because they know everything. Talk to you guys later. Bye. I have cannabis blooming where I didn't plant cannabis. It's odd how many times that happens to me. Anyways.